Hey guys, today I'll show you an American horror film called Ghost Ship. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a large Italian ocean liner named Antonia. This ocean liner is containing dozens of wealthy Italian people on board. All the passengers enjoy dancing in the ship's luxurious ballroom, while a beautiful Italian woman is seen singing a song. A young girl named Katie is all alone, while everyone on board dances with the partners. The captain of the ship stretches his arm to Katie, asking her for a dance. While they all dance, a gloved hand is seen to turn on a switch, which shows a thin wire cord from a hidden spool. Suddenly, the spool snaps and the wire slices across the dance floor like a blade cutting all the dancers in half. A few of them remain alive for several seconds before noticing that they have been cut in half. Only the young girl Katie who was dancing with the ship's captain was not killed, thanks to her small size and to the captain who was leaning down on her. Shocked by the fate of the other dancers, Katie looks up at the captain's face. However, the captain looks back at her in sorrow since his face splits open at his mouth level and the top of his head falls off, making Katie scream. In the present day, a salvage crew is seen retrieving a sinking ship in the open ocean. A crew member named Maureen goes into the big vessel to look for the damaged area. She quickly finds it and reports it back to the crew's captain. She then proceeds to weld the hole along with the help of the other two crew members. She succeeds and they bring the ship back to port and receive money for its salvage value from the authorities. While celebrating their success in a bar, a man comes to them and offers to buy the captain a drink and asks to talk to him alone. But the captain rejects his offer to buy him a drink and tells him to speak in front of the whole crew. The man introduces himself as Jack and claims that he flies for the Arctic Weather Patrol. He further adds that last month when he was flying in the middle of the Bering Sea, he came across an abandoned ship. And since the ship is in international waters, anyone who finds it can keep it. He further adds that he hasn't told anyone about this. The captain asks for some time to discuss this with the crew. The engineer says that they have been out in the ocean for six months already and that they have to return home. But his small talk doesn't change the captain's decision and he concludes the discussion by saying that everyone gets an even split of the money they make from this job. Since everyone gets a good amount of money, they all agree to his decision. The crew soon set out on their small tugboat named Arctic Warrior. Santos is steering the boat while listening to heavy metal music. The other members of the crew are in the boat's quarters chatting with each other. Jack feels extremely nauseous because this is his first time in a boat. Santos suddenly sees the ocean liner on the radar and calls the captain. Captain orders the crew to take their positions and look for the ocean liner out in the open sea. Santos suddenly sees the ocean liner right in front of them and pulls back the throttle to avoid colliding with the huge vessel. But the tugboat doesn't stop in time and collides with the ship, almost killing Mr. Blondie. When they are searching the abandoned ship, they discover that the ship is actually named Antonia Graza, an Italian luxury liner that disappeared mysteriously in May of 1962 and was believed to be lost at sea. Then they board the ship using the crane built on their tugboat. They hear a ticking sound from an ancient wall clock near them, and the pendulum suddenly stops making young Billy Butcher eagerly examine it. As he slowly approaches it, the pendulum strikes aloud, scaring him. They all enter another passageway when the floorboard below Billy breaks, and he falls in. He is saved by Maureen, who is quick enough to catch him. For a split second, she sees a young girl looking directly at her. They finally manage to pull Billy back. Then the crew explore other parts of the ship and enter a room that seems to be the main control room. While the captain and Maureen look for the ship's log, Mr. Blondie and Billy find a digital watch. Mr. Blondie says that there were no digital watches in the year 1962, and they realize that they were not the first people to board the ship. They return back to the tugboat and devise a plan to tow the ship back ashore. Maureen tells Jack her vision of the little girl she had back on the ocean liner and Jack calms her, saying that it's normal to imagine such things under stress. The following morning, the crew discovers a large hole under the ship, and the captain says that it might be caused when the ship hit one of the rocks on the nearby island. Then the team lifts up all the equipment onto the ocean liner that they need to repair the large hole. Maureen enters a room that once used to be a swimming pool and climbs down a ladder. Looking around, she finds bullet holes and bullet shells lying around. When she climbs back up the ladder, she sees the young girl again. She gets shocked at the sight and loses her grip falling down the ladder. When she searches for the girl again, she surprisingly finds Jack, who is standing near the ladder, asking her if she's alright. She gets out of the pool, not noticing the pool beginning to fill up with blood and dead bodies inside. The captain enters a room which seems to be the dead captain's office and finds a liquor bottle that seems to be opened recently. When he takes a drink from it, he sees the reflection of the dead Italian captain. Shockingly, he drops the glass and looks back again but finds his own reflection instead. 
Jack and Maureen enter another room together. She opens a hatch and huge amounts of water flow from it, carrying several dead bodies. They both get frightened and decide to leave the ship, but Jack intentionally stalls Maureen, leading her to another room that contains an old car. Maureen notices something moving in another room, so she opens the crate revealing rats piled up on top of gold bricks. She informs the crew of her discovery and they all decide to take the gold with them, leaving the ship behind. Santos works in the tugboat's engine room, while the propane tank mysteriously opens on its own. The engineer starts the boat, but it's too late. The propane tank explodes, burning Santos alive. The engineer barely escapes while their boat explodes completely. The crew argue over Santos' death and blame each other for the failure. Later, Maureen looks at the passenger's name Log and finds that the little girl's name was Katie. She also comes to know that she was traveling alone. Mr. Blondie and Billy find some old food cans in the kitchen, and Billy volunteers to eat the food first. So he takes a spoonful and gets surprised by the quality and taste, although it's 40 years old. Seeing Billy, Mr. Blondie gathers up the courage to have some of it too. Both the men start eating, and suddenly all the food turns out to be worms. Maureen goes to Katie's bunker after locating it in the log. While looking around the room, she opens a cupboard and a skeleton hanging around a noose pops out, scaring the shit and hormones out of her. The engineer, after losing a crew member, falls into a great depression and starts drinking from a wine bottle and enters a room that once used to be a ballroom. Suddenly, everything in the room starts moving around and goes back to normal, shocking him. The Italian songstress, who is seen at the beginning of the film, appears and starts giving him a passionate tongue massage. Then she starts walking away, revealing her body to increase his hormone. As expected, the engineer follows her, and when he tries to hug her, he goes through her astral form and falls to his death. The captain walks around, blaming himself for Santos' death. He drinks the liquor he found earlier in the captain's office and falls asleep on the dead captain's table. He is woken up by the ship's dead captain when he takes the bottle. The dead captain pours him a drink, saying the words, from one captain to another in Italian. They both have a small chat, in which the dead captain shows him few photographs taken two days before the ship's disappearance. The tugboat captain realizes something is wrong with the photographs. So he goes to inform the others, and on the way, the ghost of Santos meets him, and does not let him pass through. Mooring finds the captain and approaches him, but the captain sees her as Santos and attacks her. She is saved by Jack when he hits the captain on his head, knocking him out, and they put the captain into an aquarium to hold him for a while. Mooring meets the young girl's ghost again. And this time, the ghost reveals all the dark secrets that happened on the ship. Katie carries Maureen momentarily back to the past, where to her shock, Maureen finally sees what had happened. Lots of bodies were lying there. The dancers were sliced half by the iron wire, and the chefs in the kitchen were also found dead, and astonishingly, rodent poison was poured by the crew into the evening's food. The food was served, and people begin to succumb to the poison as their mouths start foaming. The crew begins to hunt the surviving passengers, including Katie, and we come to know that it was Katie's skeleton Maureen found earlier. What's more, the murderous crew force some passengers to line up by the pool and shoot them to death. As the murderous crew begin to take the gold, one crew member walks out and takes a look at the Italian songstress. He turns around and viciously murders all his fellow crewmates out of greed with a submachine gun. She then shoots him in the head with a pistol. At last, a man walks up to her, and they hug each other. However, right when he goes away, the singer looks up and sees a large hook that swings into her face, killing her. The man burns a mark on her hand, and it is revealed that Jack is the mastermind behind the attack, and he is an evil spirit. Maureen realizes that the captain might be in danger, so she runs to save him. But she's too late, as he already drowned in the aquarium after water fills it up. Meanwhile, Billy dives into the flooded area to repair the damaged pump. Unfortunately, he is caught in a giant gear underwater and gets crushed to death underwater. Maureen meets up with Mr. Blondie and tells him of her plan to blow up the ship. She leaves Jack with Mr. Blondie and goes to rig the ship with explosives. Jack suddenly changes his character and taunts Blondie, calling him a pathetic excuse for a man. When Jack doesn't seem to shut his mouth, Blondie shoots him, but Jack doesn't die. Meanwhile, Maureen rigs the ship with explosives when Blondie approaches her and asks her to stop. But Maureen doesn't listen to him and arms the trigger. She figures out that he isn't the real one and Jack reveals his form. Now it is revealed that by using the gold as bait, he has taken multitudes of souls to his masters, and that he has been doing this for a long time. They fall into a fight for a short while and Maureen manages to blow up the ship, killing Jack. She is left in the debris, as the trapped souls finally ascend to heaven. Maureen is discovered by a large cruise ship and is taken back to land. In the last scene, Maureen is in the back of an ambulance at the docks. When she looks out the back of the vehicle from her stretcher, 
she is astonished to find the battered crates of gold are loaded onto the cruise ship by her former crewman, followed later by Jack. He glares at her and Maureen screams as the doors shut. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.